Hello, this is Corazon Albina of the Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo or MUSCAT. MUSCAT is a foundation that tends to museum development, research and conservation of material culture and the layers of kaalaman or knowledge behind the creation. During these times of restricted face-to-face -face interaction, MUSCAT has been active in sharing its collection, stories in its publications, online lectures and exhibitions, and a podcast entitled Usapin Usapan, a venue for an informed and informative conversation between MUSCAT, represented by yours truly, and one subject matter expert. Today, we have a conversation with Dr. Patrick Flores, Professor of Art Studies at the Department of Art Studies at the University of the Philippines and Curator of the Vargas Museum to tell you a bit more about our guest. Patrick is the Director of the Philippine Contemporary Art Network and has curated international exhibitions. He was Visiting Fellow at the National Gallery of Art in Washington and Guest Scholar of the Getty Research Institute in Los Angeles. When I was director of the National Museum, Patrick was seconded from the UP to the NM's Arts Division as head to lead the review and reorganization of the art collection and to curate and install the opening exhibition of the National Art Gallery. Among his publications are Painting History, Revisions in Philippine Colonial Art, Remarkable Collection, Art History in the National Museum, and past peripheral curation in Southeast Asia. Patrick, uh, thank you for uh, agreeing to answer some of our questions in this conversation. As a curator, may we say that you have been inspired, stimulated, dared or challenged by a host of both the ordinary and the extraordinary during your curatorship, uh, sh well, shall we uh, call them gigs? What in your sense happens to everyday life when it enters the museum? How does a contemporary museum curate everyday life and everyday objects? Thank you. Thank you, Cora, for that question and also for the invitation. That's, a, uh, that's a, an important question, Cora, but it's also a, a tough one. No? And it's something that uh, one cannot really have a uh, definitive answer to uh, uh, just maybe entry points into how to, to discuss it. No? And as, as curators, we struggle with it every day. You know? So the everyday life of curatorship uh, struggles with everyday life. You know? So that's a constant. Mm -hmm. In, in, in curatorial work. So when the, uh, it depends on what kind of museum receives the object and also how that museum uh, represents the object in a, in a particular way. So if it is, for instance, an ethnographic museum, then the uh, discipline of ethnography uh, sort of takes over. Mm -hmm to uh, provide the uh, intellectual technology uh, to be able to, to describe the object, for instance, and uh, create a certain condition of, of uh, display and uh, the pedagogical program uh, for it to be, uh, mm -hmm. for it to circulate. No? We, uh, uh, across, okay. across its public. So that's one type of museum. If it is art, then another form of technology takes over. No? So, I mean, there are many ways uh, mm -hmm. in which um, everyday life is, is mediated. No? So, parang pinamamagitanan yon ng mga paraan kung paano siya mm -hmm. describe, paano din siya i-display. No? So, uh, dapat maintindihan kung yung mga paraan na yun. You know, Patrick, uh, senior um, eminent curator and I once tried to put together a, you know, a curatorial pitch that featured ordinary objects. We wanted to present a broom, a faucet, 
about everyday life, the most uh, useful things. Of course, they looked us, at us quizzingly. Para bang nasiraan kami ng ulo. So, in your mind, what does an ordinary object have to do with a museum? Anong ginagawa na yan dyan? Oo nga. So, uh, again, papalikan ko yung ano, pora, no? yung, yung the, the methods of description and also the methods of, of display that a particular museum employs no? in relation to the object that is being accepted into its uh, field. No? or domain. Uh, kasi kung ma, kung ma uh, intindihan natin yung methods and and ano na yon and um, uh, and modes, ma, maintindihan din natin yung interest ng mga museum na yon sa particular object na ito. So we have to think of why are these museums interested in the object and what uh, makes them think that it is that the object is interesting mm. uh, so yeah. uh, uh, and which among the innumerable objects in the world uh, assume that status of or that level of interest no? so okay. uh, moving target yan no mm-hmm. uh, so kaya dapat uh, uh, yung pagtingin sa object dapat kasabay ng pagtingin sa object ay yung pagtingin sa framework. Kasi doon lang natin maiintindihan kung bakit na andoon siya. So, walang okay. isang sagot dyan. No? Depende rin yan sa curatorial vision. Mm. Curatorial um, investment no? ng isang curator. Kasi iba-iba naman yan. May mm-hmm. ibang curator sa tingin nila, hindi naman uh, dapat nasa museum. May iba find the object uh, of value, no? So, it depends mm-hmm. ka din sa framework yon. And then finally, maybe, uh, dahil sa mga differences na ito in terms of perspective, uh, we can complicate na rin our idea of what is the ordinary. Okay, pwede. Since it is subjected nga to different ways of, of seeing, di ba? So, pati na rin mm-hmm. the notion of what is ordinary is complicated or maybe revised, transformed, no? By mm-hmm. the, the gesture of the museum. So the museum asks us to reconsider what we, how we uh, assess the object and uh, our relationship with the object now that it has assumed a different context, no? Yeah. Yeah. So you are confident, no, within that framework, within a uh, narrative, that um, an, s- such an exhibition uh, would be compelling enough uh, for an audience to experience, uh, to look into, to look at, and, uh, and that they believe that there will be some takeaway uh, from their experience of going into an exhibition uh, using everyday objects or uh, notions from everyday life? Yeah, I... Uh... May ano dyan, may konting paradox dyan. Ano? Dahil uh, yung may framework na values the ordinariness of, of the object. It's authenticity. Di ba? Uh, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's ability to access uh, uh, everyday life. No? Uh, kasi mm-hmm. yun ang interest kalimbawa ng, ng, ng museum. Pero pwede din naman na uh, yung interest ng museum ay tingnan yung mga properties na yung na, na pinopossess ng object na kakaiba, na hindi lang siguro napapansin uh, sa everyday life. So, uh, yung may tension siya between yung maybe the, you know, the banality of it, mm. uh, the ubiquity of it in everyday life, and also the... Um, the fact that it is also an artifice, that it is also uh, a thing that was made no? by a maker or by an industry. It is uh, something that... Uh, may machine aesthetic, for instance, no? na mm-hmm. kakabit dyan siguro yung pag-admit ng uh, urinal 
sa, sa isang <laughs> ni, yes. ni Marcel Duchamp, no? Mm-hmm. So, yes. Yes. Duchamp doon was to complicate, no? Oh, yes. About modern art and also to to ask us to reconsider the, the urinal as, as an object. So, artifice ba siya? Or ordinary object? Or in the in the long term, we are also asked to uh, co- reconsider the binarism to to overcome now the duality between ordinariness and maybe artifactuality so yun ang maganda diyan and that's part of curatorial work and that should be part of the museum experience so i suppose uh, um, it will help if a curator has a nimble mind you know and somebody who is open and as you said we look at an ordinary object beyond the ordinariness beyond its uh, uh, everydayness and uh, to hold some capacity i remember there's a museum in north vietnam it's ethnographic museum but they begin uh, the curatorial work by collecting contemporary and everyday objects and then they draw out the um, the ethnography and the history mm-hmm. and also the art no? so it was yes. very interesting because i was with the director and he was buying all sorts of things he was buying a packaging for eggs you know those things that look like mm-hmm. flowers in vietnam mm-hmm. and uh, and you know market baskets that were you know for use for every day very common and so i was asking yours as an ethnographic museum how do you actually approach your curatorship? And so he explained. So that is very um, interesting. Oo nga. Kasi yung, it's not really to dismiss the ordinariness, no? Mm. But to, to find in it um, a potential. Yes. A, a potential, uh, a range of potentials, no? Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it could access material culture. It could access uh, social structure. Mm-hmm. And it could also access uh, creative life, no? Uh, mm-hmm. That is beyond the, let us say, the benediction of art, no? So, mm-hmm. uh, marami namang potential, potentialities uh, uh, that uh, reside in the everyday object, no? In fact, uh, it is in the everyday that uh, political change happens no? yeah. because it is the sustained uh, uh, struggle of people with, with forces around, around them. No? And, but it's also the site of uh, control or a site of uh, domination uh, and, and constraint. No? So uh, it is a very uh, productive field no? from mm-hmm. which certain things uh, emerge. Uh, the other thing siguro na dapat banggitin ko ra na may 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 uh, maybe may overinvestment in object. No? Uh, what do you mean? Because Please explain. Kasi may every ang everyday life naman has different stimuli. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Uh, pero the museum is uh, dwells uh, quite uh, uh, more strongly on objects. Na? Kasi pwede the, the museum can collect uh, uh, the sound of everyday life. Okay. Uh, like the sound. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyday life. Oh, oh. So, may sonic. Well, may the sonic, for instance. Mm. Or let us say, uh, uh, moving image. No? Okay. Uh, image in, in everyday life. So, ang, ang siguro that intellectual equipment uh, favors the object. Uh, maybe via anthropology or ethnography or also by um, art history. So, but here in this, you know, in this pod- podcast, we underscore no, the, the notion of the contemporary museum. So yeah. the idea of the contemporary uh, allows us to to reconsider no, the mm. overinvestment in the object. Uh, that uh, the materiality is beyond the object. I mean, there are yeah. there's a range of materiality, mm. and that's what the uh, the curator should be nimble about. 
uh, because mm-hmm. you, you mentioned the word nimble. So yeah, yeah. that my broad sympathies, not uh, only uh, with uh, the object or the thing, no? but mm-hmm. the other stuff of of everyday life, maybe it's the smell, no, or uh, so the olfactory might be interesting too, but I don't know how you can display that or how you can present it, no? Uh, or the sonic, the acoustic, no? Uh, I think that would be an interesting film. Yeah. 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 But, uh, well, it wasn't done in a uh, museum setting, but uh, the mm-hmm. olfactory, the sense, I think uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Sialcita, Fernando Sialcita of Ateneo, mm-hmm. Butch, um, once had a class about the senses and he brought his students to Palenque, mm-hmm. you know, to make them smell things. And yeah. then I think his final exam was uh, like uh, a, a comparative thing on um, food. Yeah. So, mm. so this is something that can be brought inside a museum because if you remember Dr. Brian Durrance, mm. the, the curator also of uh, uh, the, the, was it the uh, yeah. self and other, s- s- self and other. He, yeah, he had once proposed a, a, uh, an exhibition and I supported his proposal. I think he was proposing to Asimus precisely about uh, an exhibition of the census. And uh, that could be every day, although knowing yeah. Brian, it might have been at another level. I mean, beyond, uh, above, uh, well, we shouldn't say above, but beyond every day. Maybe he was going to have some, you know, specialized or rarefied things. But, you know, it could be one of those, diba? Right? Yeah, that's true. That, that's a, the challenge is to curatorially, curatorially translate, no? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Something but, that is very fluid and very elusive, dinama. So how do you uh, evoke it? No, I don't want mm. to use the word capture. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, how do you evoke it? No, not yeah. to capture it, but to evoke it. Because to capture it will, you know, bring you back to the to the, the to the tyranny of the object, hindi ba? Yeah. So uh, we're trying to free up. The um, to release uh, from the, the constraints. The, yeah, the curatorial sensibility from the yeah. constraints of the an you know, object centric mm. uh, uh, curatorship. Yeah. Mm. Your previous talk with us, which is about writing the object. Now, what sort of language mm-hmm. uh, would be appropriate uh, within this framework uh, of uh, you know everyday life within a museum? Uh, should uh, the uh, language of art history be applied uh, when it is in a contemporary art museum? Or mm. should, uh, because, uh, you know, there are, you know, specific vocabulary, specific language, let's say post-structural, uh, post-modern, uh, mm-hmm. how, or will we construct language um, specific to such an exhibition? Yeah, that's a good question. and. That is the aspiration, no? To uh, depends on the vision of the of the depends on the vision of the exhibition. Yeah, uh, th- that is the aspiration of every curator to hmm. find that the language to uh, articulate or elucidate uh, uh, the that 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 vision. No? So, uh, I think the first thing to to look at is the potential of uh, transdisciplinary work. No, uh, no one discipline can give you the language kasi. So, uh, the art history, maybe something from art history or something from anthropology. Uh, may mga intersections naman yan, no? Like, uh, mm. like uh, aesthetic anthropology, for instance, or anthropology of art, no? So, you can be, I mean, that's not determinous, no? But that's a beginning, no? The mm-hmm. intersections between... Uh, disciplines like maybe a little bit of sociology uh, mixed with uh, creative writing. I mean, so you, we have to to widen our repertoire no? of uh, techniques of of elucidation and articulation. So uh, because we have to offer an equivalent gesture, diba? Right? Uh, mm-hmm of, uh, let us say, complexity or nuance or elusiveness, 
na uh, we have to converse kasi with the with the ano eh, with the the nature and climate of the of the of the stuff we present so uh, so it it is not just writing about or on it but writing with it na you write with it you write through it na or mm-hmm. you write around it yeah so that is my uh, my advice to my students na you you do not just write on it or write about it you write with it or around it or through it na so that mm-hmm. you instrumentalize the material so uh, it has agency Yeah, it has agency. In fact, the material becomes a subjectivity. Uh, and, and so your relationship with it should be intersubjective. You're a subject yourself, of course. You have an agency. The object also has it. The, the, the matter has it. No? The, it matters, <laughs> right? So, uh, so intersubjective na. Dalawa na kayong subjects dyan eh. Uh-oh. Hindi na siya subject-object. Diba? That oh. you are the subject, of course, the conceit of the human uh, will will just take over. Hindi na prepare yon. Hindi na prepare. Pero with this, uh, an everyday object uh, would have uh, been respectably uh, complicated, iba. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mm. kasi entangled naman siya at the outset. Mm. In mesh na siya in so many things, eh. like. Uh, trade or exchange, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. sensuality, or uh, function, function, motiv- motivation, class, ano, position. Mm-hmm. Diba? At so, uh, the outset, before it comes to you, highly mediated na siya. Oo nga. Uh, tapos, i-remediate mo. Okay. I-remediate mo. Kasi ilalagay mo sa ibang context. Of course, you can leave it alone. Im- I mean, no one is forcing you to remediate it. <laughs> I mean, you can leave it alone. But you can take it as its original context, di ba? Or maybe that don't admit set it. it up. Don't admit no. it to the museum at all. But because you bother, because to you bother, rem- and, yeah. and uh, because you invite the trouble, then you live with it because there are consequences. Eh? Of course. Yeah. So there are consequences of making pakialam. Diba? Diyan sa yeah. object. Yan kasi nananahimik naman eh. <laughs> uh, but uh, because it, you are drawn to it, maybe it says something. That's why you're listening to it. So mm-hmm. you, 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 you now translate that uh, curatorially. You know, I think, uh, well, We've never been a, a truly museum-going uh, population, diba? you know, mm-hmm. as a museum uh, manager, we've all struggled with raising uh, museum audience numbers, you know, creating the interest of sponsors. Uh, I would like to think that such uh, this kind of uh, programmation would interest uh, these people. But again, another complication is COVID-19. The museums have been closed. Mm-hmm. Um, we are uh, we are what uh, constricted to online presence. Mm-hmm. Um, would you think that something online relating to everyday and COVID nineteen would have some traction? Would it be worth the trouble at all? Well, it's as it's not as if we have so many choices now. No? <laughs> That's <laughs> so, true. Uh, but it's interesting na yung the media scape, mm-hmm. social media scape is the everyday life. Yes. No? So it's now, not, now, or, or has it been? Has it always been? And it is just like people like me, na dinosaurs, <laughs> in the landscape who who have been not quite resisting, but not quite actively engaging uh, on that platform has it always been the every day increasingly na but of course we we have to also say 90 naman uh, 100% ang penetration diba ng mm-hmm. uh, digital life i mean there are some areas na wala namang ganun but uh, in cities i suppose or in urban centers uh, uh, yan ang 
almost the norm, no? Na mm. we, are, we are attached to gadgets, no? Uh, yes. Uh, that you know we we sleep with it or with the gadget <laughs> beside, <laughs> beside us, and uh, the first thing we want to check when we wake up is the cell phone, no? Or our communication is also facilitated through 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 the internet, no? So the that media scape is the everyday life, and it's interesting how that becomes also the mode of delivery of uh, of, of the museum. Mm-hmm. So, parang meron siyang continuum. Eh. That it is the context, but it is also the medium. Diba? Okay. Uh, it, it is something na, you know, we, I mean, we're standing too close to it to really understand it. No? But uh, mm-hmm. that is an observation. Diba? It is okay. the context, it is the, in a way, the universe now, our kalibutan, but it is also the, uh, through that, that we are able to present na, the, uh, uh, what we do in, in the museum. So parang merong uh, continuum na compressed, di ba? Mm. Kasi nawala yung physicality of the museum going uh, experience na na compression ng digital context na so yun ang pwedeng pag-isipan so what is the potential in that na that's one thing to ano to to consider the other thing is not really to put all our eggs in that digital basket yeah pwede rin naman but how else can we do it uh, beyond the digital at least in pandemic time So, uh, naisip ko, maybe we can develop more outdoor, more outdoor, ano, more outdoor uh, options mm-hmm. for the, uh, for the uh, museum goer. More, maybe more public art. No? Because okay. uh, mas may physical distancing doon, di ba? At mm-hmm. saka, uh, open air naman. So, Less so, ang ano dyan, ang, uh, ang mga tang transmission. That, that's why in Vargas, we're developing a Vargas Garden. Oh, but you have beautiful grounds there. Parang urban garden siya, concept. No? Uh, this is also not really just to, uh, you know, uh, be part of the trend or craze, no? but uh, This is also in keeping with the spirit of Vargas. Because Vargas had a garden in Kawilihan. Eh. Yeah, and not only that, mm. the architect, si Honorato Paloma, wasn't that yes. part of his architectural intent or brief that the outside and the inside sort of yes. merged, that there was this oneness between oh. the grounds, the trees, and the interior yes. space. I remember that of architect Paloma. Yeah, it was the exp- an exponent of uh, tropical architecture. Mm-hmm. So, maganda nga, um, that's a good point you, 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 that you mentioned. You, that you, you, it's a good point you mentioned. And uh, so, yung relationship between uh, nature and culture, no? That by mm-hmm. uh, tends to dissolve, no? Architecturally mm-hmm. and also programmatically. Uh, because you have a maybe more more public art and there's a, a garden there uh, that uh, has herbs and maybe vegetables and some fruits yeah. maybe and uh, ornamentals no? so we're developing that it, it yeah. it's now a, uh, it is also our contribution to maybe green museology yeah so we are also we have to look at museology in the context of you know, the carbon footprint, right? Yeah. We're yeah. Preserving, and maybe, yeah, we're preserving art, but we're, we might be destroying the earth. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But it could also, um, how should we say, uh, deepen or broaden also uh, production of art that has to do with nature. I mean, I know everybody, many uh, mm-hmm. artists are already involved, but maybe uh, this might give uh, extra impetus. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then in in exploration of materials. Correct. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I remember. I don't know if I might mention it when Bobby Faleo, you know his 
his uh, his work he was thinking once of using with the uh, with he uses palakpak which is sawdust and yes. and and water uh, water glue no yeah, yeah he was once talking to me about using iron filings with okay. some sort of uh, adhesive uh, or i don't know i don't recall if he also wanted to use the the white glue but then the passage of time would be reckoned by kinakalawang ba sila paano sila kalawangin that sort of thing so a lot of things can be explored yeah and uh, the idea of permanence maybe has to be reconsidered uh, mm. uh, attrition at yes. least should be acknowledged as part of the life of the object no so it yeah. it in a way chastens you know the human conceit and uh, in the same yeah. way that it has been chastened by the pandemic so mm-hmm. that's ito, true ito do na natin ang pagchasten <laughs> so uh, uh, and also maybe uh, a, a stronger link between art and architecture mm-hmm. no uh, yes why not? Uh, yeah why i mean like in in, in vargas uh, uh, ning incarnation and juni collaborated So something oh. like that, uh, mm-hmm. through the medium of bamboo because both yeah. use bamboo. So yeah. yung mga ganun ba? Uh, they, mm-hmm. It can be explored and Mark Salvatus had a sound work recently in Vargas uh, in the, on the grounds. Yeah. If you remember, I curated the show for uh, Joaquin Palencia, the late Joaquin Palencia in Bagas mm-hmm. Bas. Yeah. And I... I had 10 artists working with bamboo and it was the same thing, you know, yung rethinking if something should be permanent. It was on the beach. Of course, the waves uh, swept them off and the people at some point after the opening started collecting the bamboo. Sayang naman, they were going to use them, you know. So it was really, you know, a, a process. It was, they, the, there were 10, uh, you know, installations and they disappeared in, in a matter of time, you know. Yeah. And then finally... Uh, There was nothing again on the beach. Yeah, ganun na lang talaga. Kasi it was meant to be, you yeah. know, to dissipate or mm-hmm. to... Uh, you to know, be re- reused. To, to be, be repurposed. You know? To be repurposed, to be remediated by, yeah. by everyday life. So, yes. Uh, yun ang ano dyan. Yun ang, that's the consciousness, I think, that we should uh, assume. Yes. Uh, as we move forward. Huh? Yeah, and we move forward within this uh, quote unquote a landscape that is a new normal. Yeah, and maybe the idea of normal uh, should also be reconsidered. What, what does it mean to be in a normal situation? Mm-hmm. Maybe the normal before wasn't really normal. That's true. Yeah. That's why yeah. we have come to this, <laughs> because we have normalized it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So, It's, a, it's an important moment for us to rethink so many things. And it is an opportunity for the museum institution mm-hmm. and the curatorial, maybe the cura- curatorial profession mm-hmm. to uh, calibrate, no? calibrate yeah. gears, uh, uh, intelligence, no? uh, uh, to, to be more responsive. To, to, to what might or what could happen uh, yeah. in the future. Yeah. yeah. To be nimble, using my, reusing my word. Anyway, we've jumped off from, you know, the, what sh- how should we uh, characterize or should we characterize the word every day at all? But from, from every day, we've gone through this conversation and uh, we've opened a lot of uh, ideas to maybe for everybody, all of those listening, to, to consider, to explore if they're curators or artists or, or thinkers. And I would like to thank you, Patrick, for leading the way through this conversation. And I hope we can have many, many more of this, uh, especially during these times that we cannot talk face to face, that we can have more of these conversations on Muscat's podcast, which we call Usapin, Usapan. Maraming salamat sa'yo, Patrick. Till the next time. Yeah, salamat din. Salamat din, Cora, sa, 
sa invitation. I think the we we feel that the the time is on our side <laughs> because we have uh, too much of it, no? In yes. this uh, in a way vacuum, no? So we yes. we have to uh, explore the possibilities of having time on our side, but we also uh, uh, there's also a part of us telling us that we time might be running out too. No? Uh, <laughs> okay. So, so that is the I think the the poetic and political tension that is inscribed in everyday life. So, maraming salamat, Cora. Maraming salamat ulit, Patrick. As I said, till soon. To our listeners, thank you for spending time with us. It is our hope that you found this conversation stimulating, opening doors to insights and further thoughts about the notion of everyday within a museum context. Muscat has planned a number more of podcasts and we invite you to join us as we tackle various usapin with our usapan with experts, storytellers, and bearers and custodians of Philippine culture. Maraming salamat po! <laughs>